we are back thanks for clicking on the link welcome to good energy enjoy the content and everyone have a blessed day guys welcome 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 thanks for clicking on the channel this is good energy smash the subscribe button smash the like button and comment below we are back at the alberto open in Guajara, mexico and yes this was a good one sloan stevens versus daria seville seville came out guns blazing high off that emma raticanu win and high off of that dull hide win she would take the first set off of sloan six four everything was hitting for daria seville and she ran into a wall though in the second set set number two sloan stevens would serve first end up taking the set six three in the second set sloan stevens had a 82.1 percent first serve unbelievable she dominated the service games her second serve points won five for five 100 percent cool as the other side of the pillow sloan stevens has one of the best forehands in the game and i feel just with her getting married she's a lot more calm focused relaxed and she can just focus on her game and on the off-court issues for those that don't know sloan stevens is uh she's really a rally player uh she's the type of player that's so fit and athletic one of the most athletic females on tour she's the type of player that, that just keeps balls in play until you hit long or make a mistake that's really the type she can hit winners down the line she does have a decent backhand but sloan stevens her running forehand is very powerful and uh, that's really her bread and butter when she's going to take the winner but nonetheless sloan is just so fit she can keep balls in play until you make a mistake and that's what she's doing here and i feel unlike sloan the last couple years the Sloan now, um, her coach Amaru, she's just calm and relaxed. And I haven't seen this poise out of her since her run in 2017. I mean, I was watching that unbelievable match against um, in the um, quarterfinals against Venus Williams. And by the way, Venus Williams is the 20, 20th uh, anniversary of her uh, making number one on the WTA, WTA tour for the first time. Uh, it took her seven years. At the age of 21, she made number one. Uh, in the world that was amazing but i haven't seen sloan this relaxed since that u.s open run and the reality here is she had to come back against venus williams in that match and and in case you're too young to remember the 2017 u.s open uh, there was a hot night in new york very humid they had the roof open all of the stars were there jay-z all the entertainers were there and it was a really really star-studded event sloan stevens as you see her fitness there uh pretty close to what we see now in terms of her form uh very slim very athletic and in shape she's looking very comparable to that uh very good defensive streak there and she's looking to play the part here lately uh, but that night against Venus Williams she had to face heat seeking missiles straight bombs that she had no chance to return although she won the first set the second set Venus Williams came back and for those that haven't really seen a prime Venus Williams I encourage you to go look up the archives but Venus Williams had a strong forehand a strong backhand she could defend she could she could play horizontal or vertical and she had a really really good net game she was a good doubles player but she had a good net game where she could come forward to the net and volley and the reality here is sloan had to deal with so much uh the crowd was essentially rooting for venus for the most part you know why wouldn't they be sloan was coming off of a abhorrent uh injury and her ranking shot up to over a thousand she much like emirata kanyu they had they they gave her no chance to win the u.s open but venus williams with her great net play uh volleys drop shots all night long this is sloan having to run from the baseline up to the net 
to save one of those drop shots. And this is the result. Venus Williams going over her head. Venus Williams extended, we're talking about 10 feet tall. Okay, with her extended, defending 10 feet tall at least. Uh, Sloan had to go over her head. Venus Williams had no shot. Venus Williams had a chance to close this match out in the third set. It would go three tough sets, but Sloan would get the break late on and close Venus Williams out seven to five. But it was tough. At one point, uh, being up 5-4, it looked like Venus would end this match, but Sloan came back and won. As we fast forward to Gajara, Mexico, beautiful arena, beautiful stadium. Sloan did get the win tonight. If you guys follow the channel, uh, I said take Sloan as a future to win this tournament. Uh, she's looking very calm, she's relaxed, and she's just better than the competition, especially with her playing um, as we know her to play. In terms of Daria, she's making her comeback much love to her she looks pretty darn good but sloan owned the head-to-head -head against daria this is a match i gave out uh sloan all the way uh the defending champion however is out buskova who's been looking pretty darn good lately uh, she did take out termo in straight sets six four six one and buskova's gonna be facing wing uh wing wing took out smedlova six two six three and I'm going to focus more on the Wang match because I think Wang is getting a pretty good spot here facing uh, Marie Buzkova. And Wang did a, a, a pretty decent job against uh, Smidlova, who I felt was playing pretty darn good. And I think both, um, essentially, uh, even though um, Buzkova got the win over Tormo, I think both ladies are playing better than Buzkova right now. Uh, Wang, first serve percentage in this match, 62% which isn't eye-dropping, but the first serve points won, which shown that she was at least to keep the pressure on Schmidlova, 82%, unbelievable. And Buskova overall, her numbers haven't really been that great this year. And the reality here is, yes, it could be a turning point uh, with, the, with the win over uh, Termo. That could definitely be a turning point. Um, but her first serve points won is only 64%. Uh, she's not really doing anything of, with aces, only averaging one ace per game. And second serve points won 56.8%. Um, she is saving her break points though, which is showing that she's going out without a fighting spirit. And it's it hasn't been pretty, but Buskova, she is winning her service games. Uh, the match with Wang, I think that's a match that you probably want to take the over. I would lean Wang, but I would definitely take the over. I do like Sloan Stevens to, to win the tournament, though. I think in reality, it's probably more likely to see a Wang Stevens final. Uh, Kalis Kaya hasn't really done much uh, competing against former top players. Yeah, Stremka is pretty much the, the biggest notable win she's had in her career the last couple of years. In terms of Wang, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty good to see Wang kind of getting back to the top of where she was. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I, I think Wang, you know, I mean, Wang and with her career, she's kind of been on a decline lately. I mean, previously in the past, Wang has put up some decent numbers in the majors. Uh, the Grand Slam, she's made it to the U.S. Open quarterfinal uh, one time in 2019. She also made the round of 32 at the historic Wimbledon the same year. In 18, she made the Roland Garros round of 32 in the Australian Open 2020. Uh, she made the, the round of 16, and that's the year we saw her defeat um, the, um, Serena Williams. So, I mean, Wang, again, I mean, Wang, she's, she's got a couple titles under her belt. Uh, she essentially, you know, the highest rank she's been is 12. 2018, 2019 has been her current. Um, I mean, that's been her best year she's put forth as a professional. You know, that year she was she was the top player at a lot of these lower 125 level tournaments. I've seen her play a couple times in person she was getting the the number one seed at these tournaments uh, but she does have a win over Corey golf we saw her do that at the australian open this year van uplick she took her out pretty easily she forced three sets with um madison keys and we all know that match that was a tough match there um 
where um, Madison Keys actually had the nine match points in the tie break. But she's she's very versatile. She's good at mixing it up, and I can see that giving. I can definitely see that giving uh, Bushkova a lot of problems. Um, Wang is really good at mixing it up. She's very versatile. Uh, she'll hit you with a slice, a drop shot, um, a forehand down the line. So she's really good at mixing it up. But again, the golf, Corey Golf's definitely her biggest win. Um, other than that, going back to last May at the uh, Romagna Open, she made a great one, uh, great run there to the finals where she actually did lose to uh, Coco Golf. But she did beat Sloane Stevens uh, in straight sets in that matchup uh, in the semifinals. So um, a potential Wang Sloane Stevens final is definitely on the horizon. Um, but I do like Sloan to get revenge against Wayne Bear. But enough of that, guys. Let's go to the Qatar Open WTA 1000 level event. And yes, this here, whew, exciting tennis today. And if you were able to watch these matches, they were very, very exciting. And these, this is the type of tennis that really doesn't matter if it's 4 or 5 a.m., you gotta get your popcorn, you gotta set your alarm clock, and you gotta get up and watch these matches. Uh, let's take a first look at Iga Swiatek. Uh, two of the top 10 players remain, Annette Conteve and Iga Swiatek, and these two ladies also made the WTA final, so we are very familiar with these ladies. But uh, Iga, in terms of her road here, uh, she, the round of 62, she had to buy. The round of 32, we saw her defeat Golubic in three sets. She looked a little rusty. She won the first set 6-2. She dropped the second set 6-3. And she would beat Golubic in a pretty easy fashion in the third set 6-2. She would then move on to face uh, Kataskina. That's a match I gave out on the Patreon. I said, look, Kataskina does not look good. She looks injured. It seems like there's something wrong with her. She's moving very hindered, very slow. She's not her normal fast self. She's a she's she's a ball of energy, and uh, she just she looked really slow. And nonetheless, it proved. Suiantek won the first set six three and routed Kataskina six love in the second set. That was the round of sixteen. As we headed to the quarterfinals, Sabalenka, the Belarusian. Uh, six two six three straight set victory. Sabalenka was missing everything. Swiatek just beat her to the punch. She was faster, and it seemed that was a match there that I thought I, I thought Sabalenka had a good chance to hit through Swiatek's defense. But the reality here is Sabalenka hasn't looked good this year, and it's definitely a match that Swiatek. Uh, Probably should have been favored in, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, Sabalenka, she lost her number two ranking with that loss there. So we will uh, we will definitely see what's going to be shaken up in the new rankings. I'll, I'll probably, I might even post that a little later here in this video. Um, and that led to a match with Marie Sacri, which took place today. I had my popcorn watching that match. How would it go? Marie Sacri would be on the defensive all day. That's right, the number six seed Marie Sacri just had no answer at all for Iga. Wouldn't you love a signed bracket from Iga Sriante? Who would not love one? I tell you, I would put that right in my trophy collection. So beautiful. Marie Sacri was just simply on the defensive all day. Uh, Iga dominated. Now, there was a possibility that uh, a lot of people thought that Sakri could just hit through the defense of Suyantek, and Iga struggles against the stronger players, but if she could handle Sabalenka's power, she could definitely handle Sakri's power. Now, she's never beat Sakri. Sakri owns a head-to-head -head three love, but this is how Sakri's day went. <laughs> yes, heat-seeking missiles coming from Iga all day, and you rarely see Iga animated. Today she got up for this match, I felt she knew she had to bring the energy, and I felt she knew early on if she let Marie dominate the crowd with her antics and her, you know, her cheering. Marie has a traveling crew that travels with her, and I don't think they showed up today because Iga dominated the crowd. She was animated. She was pumped up. And you rarely see Iga show emotion on the court. She was very animated. And I 
love if this is going to be the new Iga, I love it. But nonetheless, it was all about her defense. Everything Sakri threw at her, she defended well. She controlled the ground strokes, very powerful angles. And as I say all the time, Iga is a she's a rhythm player. If you want to be Iga, you have to disrupt her timing and you have to mix in net play. Iga is not good on the run. She likes to get in position quickly and she likes to get in position quickly and control the rally. And you have to dominate her, make her move around and disrupt her timing and her rhythm. That's how you beat Iga. And Iga did a good job of controlling and dominating Sakri. Sakri's on the defensive all day. And when you're a strong player, and a lot of your power is exhibited through offense and controlling the rallies. And Iga did the opposite of that. Uh, uh, Sagu was running all around the baseline. And she couldn't really get good shots in to control the rallies. And great job to Iga. Hats off. She punched herself a, a, a spot into the finals. Who would she face? Would it be Annette Conteve or Jelena Ostapenko? How would Annette Conteve do against the extreme firepower of Jelena Ostapenko. Now we know recently at St. Petersburg and that Conteve did get the win in the semifinals, but would Jelena Ostapenko's power be like Clara Tawson's? Clara Tawson made Conteve lean back. That's right. Fat Joe told her to lean back. The power of Clara Tawson at the Australian Open was very, very critical in that matchup there. Annette Conteve had no answer for it. The power literally almost knocked her on her back. And that was very disappointing. We wanted to see Conteve win the Australian Open. She needs a major under her belt. Watch out Wimbledon. But nonetheless, Clara Tawson would defeat Conteve in extreme fashion. How would Ostapenko do today? Would she get revenge from last week's semifinal loss, straight set 6-3, 6-4? We were expecting probably a very, very tight, tight match. But nonetheless, I had Conteve winning this matchup. Jelena Ostapenko, she did come out with her heat-seeking missiles again. And that's her game. Jelena Ostapenko has a lot of power. In my opinion right now, she's the strongest player on tour. And she's fit. This was a very winnable matchup for her. She did very good against Conteve last time out in St. Petersburg. Although she lost in straight sets, Jelena Asipenko came out and won the first three games until, until Annette Conteve finally turned it on and figured it out. The difference in this match here in Doha is Annette Conteve was ready for the power. She punched, completely just jumped on Ostapenko from the start. She was all over her. There's nothing Ostapenko could do. She was, Annette Conteve was simply ready for it. And the reality here is this is good coaching, this is good training, and this is film watching. She was ready for it. And the first set, Annette Conteve would win 6 one. She would close her out in the second set. Jelena Ostapenko did put up a fight, but this match took one hour. A semifinal match taking one hour. Unbelievable. Annette Conteve dominated the service game. Four aces to one. In terms of double faults, only one. Ostapenko to 61.7% first serve compared to 43%. 67 first serve points one compared to 52%. Second serve points one, 60% compared to 44%. Break point saved, three out of four. Ostapenko had nothing for her break points, 33%. Unbelievable. The return stats, 47% to 32%. Second return points won, 56% to 39%. Unbelievable. Annette Conteve looks really, really good. Now, she has a finals matchup with another fellow WTA finalist of 2021, Iga Swiatek. Who will win that matchup? The last time we saw these two ladies play was actually not at the WTA Finals. No, they were actually in separate brackets. Uh, Annette Conteve, I felt, had the... I felt she had the easier bracket. Not that any of those matches were easy, but I did feel Iga had a very tough draw. But the um, the Hitsunetsa group we saw was Sabalenka, Sakri, Iga, and Paula Badosa, which, I mean... <laughs> 
that's a lot of power in my opinion. It's, it was the strongest bracket in terms of power. And the other bracket was the Teal Ishian. And that bracket there had Barbara Kachikova, Pliskova, Muguruza, and Annette Kantave. Two of the older ladies on tour, uh, Pleskova and Muguruza, who actually made the final several times. And then uh, I felt Krajikova, who doesn't have the strongest serve, I felt Annette Kantave definitely had a much more favorable bracket. Uh, the Hitchin, it's a bracket. I mean, Sabalenka, Zachary, Bedosa. I, I think Eva, with her weak serve, was definitely, you know, as, as we saw, the, the first person to go. But nonetheless, she did get the win with Paula, over Paula Bedosa uh, before she was eliminated. Um, but yes, the last time these two ladies actually played, the last time these two ladies met was at the US Open last September. And Iga actually has won the last two meetings between this two, uh, dominating the Roland Garros match, winning that in straight sets, with the second set being uh, six love. But uh, Iga also won their US Open match in September. It did go three sets. But if we take a look here, um, Annette Conteve, her strong shot is her backhand. Uh, there's no doubt about it. She's got one of the best backhands in the game. If you want to beat Annette Conteve, you have to force her to beat you with her forehand. I felt Iga did a really good job of that when her backhand was hitting and on point. These are the type of shots that Conteve had. Iga had no chance at returning these shots. Look at her. 10 feet away from that. There's no way she's going to even get close to that. That's what Annette Conteve's backhand does. It's one of the best in the business. And I will be doing a backhand uh, video of the top 10 backhands in the game. And again, look at Iga doing the splits here off of Annette Conteve's backhand. Her backhand is very, very powerful. Again, she has no chance of returning that shot. Um, if we take a look at one of the keys for Iga and how she had success during this match. Uh, not only, again, if you're gonna make, if you're gonna be in that conteve, you got, you gotta force her to move, bring her big self from the, from the, from the baseline, make her run vertical, and disrupt her game. You can't use your backhand if you're running towards a net, essentially. Um, but Iga did a really good job of controlling the net play. And a lot of these top players that like to dominate the back line and transition quickly from defense to offense, you have to make them move forward and disrupt those patterns. But this is really the key why Iga was able to win. Iga, as I said, if you watch my WTA Finals video, Iga, in my opinion, or I mean, it's, it's really a fact. It's probably not just my opinion, but Iga out of the top WTA finalists last year, she's got the worst serve than Krachikova. Iga's serve is just not dominant. Uh, Annette Conteve started the match off inside just expecting a weak serve from Iga. And that's that's really no respect on the serve. I mean, it's not like Iga can position it straight into her shoulder and make it uncomfortable. But the reality here is Annette Conteve just didn't respect her serve and most people don't respect her serve. Iga's a great clay player but she's a she's a really good rhythm player more of a serve and volley player to get the ball in play and set up her routine but the shots that Conteve was hitting and not respecting her serve um, it wasn't working she had to make an adjustment the reality here is Iga served a really good game in the US Open I felt she came to play it's a major you got you have to get up for the slam tournaments and Iga played a really good game definitely service wise uh, but nonetheless this was happening all game on Annette Conteve uh, especially the first set Iga serve was pretty dominant and Annette Conteve wasn't respecting it she was hitting it long in the second set, Annette Conteve did make the adjustments. This is what professionals do. When they see what their opponent's doing, they make adjustments. And now you see her behind the line, uh, respecting the serve a little bit more. And the reality here is she probably didn't expect Iga to have such a dominant serve. Uh, Iga being the higher seed, yes, that's uh, definitely coming off of being the previous um, French Open champion and just winning the slam there you get so many points but nonetheless um, Annette Conteve 
would really start her hot streak. She did lose the U.S. Open, but she really started her hot streak uh, probably around August, September, October. But nonetheless here, um, and that's when she she's still on a, a hardcore uh, win streak, especially indoors. But playing at Louis Armstrong Stadium, the sun uh, seeps in the stadium, so it's very tough to see. So I felt after she made the adjustment, she started to get to get the points and respect her serve a little bit by standing behind the baseline. But playing these games in midday Louis Armstrong Stadium, I go to a lot of these games, the sun is in the way. I felt Iga's visor served her pretty good. This was a tough match. Iga did get the double break in the third set, end up winning the match. But if you're playing in Louis Armstrong Stadium mid-afternoon, you need a visor. The sun was all over the court. And then there were spots of shade where I felt the visor, uh, the 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 you know the, the low hat that she wears and the visors that she wears really suit her game well for the outdoor courts and the reality here is with Louis Armstrong Stadium the roof open it's the sun is all in your face and I, I felt this after the adjustment the game was about 50 50 but definitely the sun I felt impacted uh, Conteve for the worse um, but it was a close match who will win the matchup and the finals of the Qatar Open. Now, as I said previously, Iga does own the head-to-head, -head, winning the last two matches, the U.S. Open last year in three sets, beating her at Roland Garros in straight sets. The first set did go to a tiebreak, though, but the second set was a donut. Both of those came in the round of 32 in slam tournaments, okay? Now, that's very important. Slam, slam, you're going to get your best play. Uh, Conteve did beat Swiatek uh, three sets at the Australian Open of 2020. That was a round of 16. That was uh, Conteve's uh, best finish up until then. And then Cincinnati in 19, she beat her in straight sets. Iga looked very, very impressive against Zachary and Sabalenka. Okay, Conteve is not going to be bringing that type of power into this match. That is a check mark for Iga in terms of her defense right now. Conteve, the adjustment she made against Jelena Asapenko, very, very impressive. Okay, very impressive. That's something that's like, you just don't come in and just make Asapenko, especially how she's playing right now, just embarrass her like that. Uh, the road to get here, both ladies have faced some really tough matches. I mean, if you take a look at Take a look at Conteve for for the most part. Um, she beat and she had the round of 64. She had the bye, of course, right? She beat Conj in the round of 32 in straight sets. She beat Mertens in three sets. Uh, Mertens is definitely a, a fit player. She's a good shot maker. Uh, she can defend and she can transition to offense good. Uh, on Jabor, the win there against Jabor in front of the home crowd very impressive 6461 and the win against Asapenko 6164 I do feel even though Iga has gotten the best over the last two times I feel that the play against Sakri today it was it was kind of spotty although she beat Sakri in straight sets I feel that Sakri you know I'm not going to say that um, Iga didn't deserve the win but I do Watching that match, I do feel Sakri had just had a bad day. There's a lot of shots and points that Sakri should have won, and I felt if she should have made them, the match could have been totally different. Um, the blowout, on the other hand, with Asapenko shows the adjustments, it shows the coaching. That is coaching right there and training. Um, I'm going to take Annette Conteve to beat Iga Swiatek. Uh, this is a match that could go three sets. I do like the over normally in finals, but I'm going to pick a winner. That's going to be Annette Conteve. Annette Conteve looks too good. Out of the last eight tournaments that she's enrolled in, she has made either the finals or the semifinals in seven of them. She's beating the best in the world consistently. She's on a 20-plus match game indoor hard winning streak. Now, technically, this is outdoor hard, but the reality here is Annette Conteve is doing very well on hard. Iga Swiatek serve is just not that good. Although I showed the photos of how well she served in New York, the reality here is the coaching adjustments she made against playing Asapenko 
you know, within um, two times within a week. Very, very impressive. Now I feel that the adjustments here with Iga in terms of her serve wise, I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be looking at those adjustments very early on in the match. Uh, this is a match that if there's a live option available, you might want to take a close look at that and monitor the adjustments from Conteve. But this is a match there that I just, I feel Conteve is going to win. I, I think she has more tools in her arsenal. Uh, she's overall a better shot maker. And Iga just didn't look too good against uh, Zachary. I mean, she got the win. I think she showed the enthusiasm. But Annette's on a roll. And remember, when you're on a win streak, you can only lose once. So you got to take Annette Conteve. Uh, I do want to transition to Venus Williams. Now, not only is it Black History Month in the States, but why not? It's only fitting to cover one of the greatest players, uh, male or female, to ever do it. Venus Williams, unbelievable, 800 plus wins, uh, 49 titles, unbelievable. But the reality here is Serena Williams, uh, this marks the 20th uh, anniversary where she uh, essentially reached number one. And the reality here is eight years being a professional, she had already, um, you could really say seven because she wasn't playing a ton of matches early on, but nonetheless, um, she accomplished um, she accomplished over what uh, an eight year span 21 titles and that's with winning the US Open uh, in consecutive years as well as the um, as well as the um, Wimbledon uh, seeing her win Wimbledon was just simply amazing and the reality here is Venus Williams is one of the greatest to ever do, especially female-wise. And if we take a look at the anniversary of her reaching number one, finally, uh, this is the top 10 uh, that year, uh, 20 years ago. Venus Williams ranked number one. Uh, the, the U.S. female players were dominating tennis back then, and a lot of the experts say that, you know, U.S. female tennis is in trouble. Uh, especially with the Williams sisters being, um, you know, getting getting up there in age and being, you know, close so close to retirement, which I feel retirement could come within the next year or two. Uh, Venus Williams, number one. Jennifer Capriati, who, if you guys have a chance, please watch my King Richard video. Uh, you have some really, really good um, comments from uh, Rick Macy there uh, about how he essentially said hey venus being 13 years old 12 years old was better than capriati who was already like 15 or 16 and one of the top prospects uh, for females tennis at the time uh, but capriati and venus and serena they all had some great matches uh, if you got a chance go watch those lindsey davenport another one you know all four of those ladies battled out some great matches kim clusters the great hall of famer from belgium unbelievable can't forget about Martina Hengis, unbelievable. Justine Hennen, Monica Sellis, Jelena Dokic, Serena. Serena was ranked ninth then, unbelievable. Number 10, uh, Marshmallow, unbelievable. I mean, pff, unbelievable. This this top 10 is amazing here. Just seeing Serena rank ninth. And Serena, I mean, Serena's got 23 Grand Slams, but there's a lot of Grand Slams, at least two or three where she should have won. I mean, the, the most recent uh, one with Osaka there was tough. Just being penalized uh, a game, that was very, very tough. Um, the recent, um, the Wimbledon there with um, against Simona Halep, that was tough. Um, great, great matches. But for those of you not familiar with Venus Williams' game, uh, good forehand, good backhand, good net play very very talented good serve and she was really good at redirecting your energy and, and a lot of the greats are they can take your strongest shot your best shot and just take the pace and velocity off the ball and just create a different type of rally until she can get the shot that she wanted very very great player hall of famer uh, she could hit it deep she could hit it mid-range she can mix and drop shots control the ground strokes uh, explosive serve to keep you moving from side to side very tall and lengthy but very athletic and mobile 
and very strong her power i mean you you saw the record-breaking female serves when venus came up in the game and then serena got stronger so the record-breaking female serve started with venus and serena you know ladies weren't hitting the ball that strong with aces you know they just weren't hitting the ball that strong but nonetheless, uh, congratulations, Venus, on the historic accomplishment. And uh, it's, it's ooh, amazing how time flies. Guys, this has been Good Energy. I hope you enjoy my picks and predictions. Please smash the like button. Please smash the comment button. And please smash the subscribe button. Thank you for your love, your time. I will be back with more tennis. Top 10 backhands. Top 10 forehands. Top 10 servers in the game. And why not? The top 10 most beautiful ladies. All these ladies who see them work hard, blood, sweat, and tears. Why not see them off the court uh, dressed up and looking nice and enjoying what they do? This is good energy, guys. Until next time, peace and love.